We've reviewed all of the high school signees for this year's class. It's time to show you the transfers, all receivers. But before we get to that, Bronco, I want to talk about quick fixes. It's a, kind of a tricky game when you're looking at recruiting. And generally, it seems like the quick fixes come from the junior college or Division I ranks. It, it does. It uh, doesn't always have to be like that. Um, and there's risk in that. Uh, but if you have really hardworking recruiters as assistant coaches that do their research and and you start early enough to expand the amount of time you have, you lessen the chance of risk, and you really give, your, give yourself and that player the best chance for success. Speaking of those transfers, a ton of excitement starting with this group, the wide receivers. Devon Blackman, a transfer from Riverside City College. Devon, not only a transfer from Riverside City, um, but University of Oregon out of high school. Very fast, very athletic, very explosive, great with the ball after he catches it. Could be a, dy a dynamic returner as well. Um, there will be certainly risk to a defense if he's out there by himself at a number one position or if he's in the slot. Another weapon to make sure defenses, it's not just Taysom and Jamal, you better now acknowledge where Devon is going to be. And I like the volatility that that adds to yards after the catch. Not only was he a high school teammate of Jamal Williams, they ran track together since they were seven years old. So this is kind of a uh, reunited situation. And they both say Devon is faster. I, I expected wow. when I asked Jamal to say that Jamal was faster, and he said, no, Devon's a lot faster. Than and me. that takes a lot for Jamal. It, it does. For to, those, that know, those that. Of us that know him, yeah. <laughs> Another mid-year enrollee is wide receiver Nick Kurtz from Grossmont College. Again, you can't replace Cody Hoffman, the greatest receiver in BYU history, arguably, but Nick Kurtz is a good start. If you just look at his size right away, you start saying, man, that looks kind of like Cody. And not saying that he is, but size to speed to range to athleticism to the use of his body to the way he runs his routes. You have a unique compliment by Nick Kurtz taller um, and a different kind of challenge and then Devon shorter with a little bit more explosion with two of the most highly recruited junior college players in the country both coming to BYU. Love the message that Nick sent out on Twitter saying when he was just walking around campus, I love the feeling that I get here. He, he, we, we are working him to death and he just keeps smiling. I mean, it's, I'm starting to take it personal. So, I mean, <laughs> can I work him hard enough where he actually makes it look hard? But he loves it, which is great. And note to Nick, you might want to slow down a little <laughs> bit there. Uh, an interesting backstory with wide receiver Jordan Leslie, mm -hmm. a transfer from UTEP. I believe this is the first postgraduate transfer ever in BYU history. It, it is. And but a unique story that kind of builds the momentum leading into that, meaning that so Jordan is the leading receiver at UTEP, will get his engineering degree this spring, which then means he has one year to play. Um, Coach Holiday has coached him, but actually now is his stepson. And so there's a family affair here that not only do you have a position coach um, of a player that's already very dynamic, but you have a chance to unite a family and get a great finish to your education even though he's well on track and already graduated but at a position that um, we need and will help us get better. That is a loaded group. Here they are, the three transfers, all receivers and ready to work with one Taysom Hill. I'm guessing Coach Holiday is in a good mood after he, uh, locking in this talented group. He is smiling uh, as we all are uh, and I, I'm really counting on Devon and Nick and Jordan. Um, they're very different and unique in personality and they're very different and unique in how they play. And so now it's just a matter for us offensively making sure that we highlight what each of their strengths are in addition to what we already do very, very well. And I think that will lead to more points against the better opponents. You throw those three in with Trey Dye. That's well, a tasty and then, group. then it's nice to remember um, Mitch Matthews is still here and, and Ross Oppo is still here. And that becomes, um, makes us both smile. There's an early nickname, the Bomb Squad. Could be. For the wide receivers. A unique to BYU is the returned missionary group. It's loaded and lengthy. So let's go with the returned missionaries on offense. We begin with a guy that can shore up potentially the depth at the quarterback position, McCoy Hill from Sandy, Utah. Yeah, so McCoy came in. We were running a different style of offense at the time. Uh, we, he was athletic and big enough where we were going to give him a scholarship at tight end. Well, now um, we're a different system, similar to what he played in high school, and we have a need. So um, quarterback it could be a great fit for him, and we'll see how he does when he comes home. Great size coming back at tight end. Here is Colby Jorgensen from Provo, Utah. And I mean that, great size. Yeah, so 6'7", so about 230, and super fast. The defensive coaches ask every day, uh, how about outside backer? How about outside? And the offensive coaches, no, tight end, tight end. <laughs> so each day I've got this controversy happening. Uh, brother of Austin Jorgensen, and so really hardworking family. 
and great kids, but Colby is going to be fun um, and will be at tight end as he comes home. Matt Sumption is another tight end. He's 6'8 and comes from yeah. Springville, Utah. If you put Colby and Matt together, they're great looking players. Matt, um, most of his success in high school was at um, basketball. Uh, decides to play football late in his career. And we saw enough as he came to camp and running routes and catching the football that it'd be a very unique target. Um, came back off his mission, bigger, stronger, and and um, I think more excited to be a football player and us having him than maybe what we even were before. He's already in our program, and I think he has a bright future. Bigger and stronger off the mission. How common is that? Not very, but man, when you're as tall as Matt was going out, um, weight can go on fairly easily. So he's bigger, it doesn't look much bigger, but it was something like 20 pounds or 30 pounds. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but he looks great. Family ties common to BYU football offensive lineman Corbin Kafusi from Provo, Utah, the little brother of Bronson. Yeah, 6'8 already. He probably left at about 6'6. Seoul, Korea is where he's serving. He'll come back. We think he could be a great offensive tackle. So he'll be tall and skinny when you first see him, but eventually he has five years now to get ready to play after his mission. Um, athletic and all the Kafusis similar to Bronson end up growing out and up and becoming kind of uh, more athletic and coordinated as their bodies catch up to their size and we think he's going to be great that way. We may need to teach you some Korean so that you can you can transfer over some I'm of those things to I'm just going to use kind of sign language. Yeah. <laughs> On the offensive line, Ului Lapuaho is from West Valley, Utah. There's not a player in our program that I'm more excited about right now. Uh, Louis came back, he's already training with us. He looks exactly like um, not only an NFL player, but maybe an all-pro NFL player, wow. an offensive tackle. Um, he is about 6'7 and about 3'10 and moves light on his feet and is fiercely competitive and loves to play. Um, that player alone, if we didn't have a signing class and it was just a Louis coming home, I, I like him a lot. I'm pretty good about your yep. chances. On the offensive line as well is Manu Mulitalo. He hails from West Valley, Utah as well. Completely different body type from what we were just talking about with a Louis, more of a guard type, very physical, more of a run blocking uh, offensive lineman, but with the system we have now, um, he won't be re returning home until late June and uh, possibly even July. And so might need some time before he's back and fully ready to go, um, but we'll be glad to have him back. And we want quality offensive linemen and we want physical offensive linemen and that's what he is. Brian Rawlinson is from Ulaga, Oklahoma, and I hope I said that right so the Rawlinson family can correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he adds some more depth on the O-line. I'm glad it was you that said that because <laughs> I, I get enough Twitters and emails and stuff. <laughs> Brian's already with us back from Auckland, New Zealand, and if you look at the size and the way he moves and um, kind of his football pedigree, he has a great start. And again, as most offensive linemen, now he's off a of mission. It'll probably take a year before everything's all lined up and ready to go, but Man, he's, a, he's a, a really quality player that's good to have back. Returned missionaries on offense. The sheer size of these athletes is downright impressive, Coach. I, I really like the not only the range, if you look at the top row in terms of size, but if you add the bottom row and now look at the weight in addition to the size, uh, I feel in addition to our, already, um, pl uh, our class that's already signed and you add them to it, it becomes pretty powerful. We reintroduce you to the return to missionaries on defense next. Who is now called to serve on the Cougar defense with Bronco Mendenhall?